<clears throat> Welcome, listeners, to another episode of the Banquet Hall Podcast. Uh, I am blessed to be joined by another one of the UCSD youngins. I mean, you're not a UCSD youngin anymore, but one of my former students, mentees, friends, homies, uh, Kennedy. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Really glad to be here. Um, I'm glad you invited me because I always like watching. Um, so yeah, I'm just super blessed to be here. Yes, Kennedy and I go not that far back. I was going to say we go way back, but we really don't go that far back. But it feels like in the short time that I've known you, we've developed such a good friendship. You're such a good little homie. And so I'm excited to bring your story to the pod. Uh, new listeners, first time listeners, friends of Kennedy who are joining for the first time, make sure y'all follow the podcast at Banquet Hall Pod. Uh, tune in for more stories. You can hear from some of Kennedy's friends from undergrad, uh, people that we went to UCSD with, but happy to get through all those details. Uh, but Kennedy, the first question I always start the podcast with, because it's always important to understand where people are coming from, where are you from and how did that shape the person that you are becoming? So I'm from Long Beach, California, LBC 562. Love it out there. Um, I was born there, kind of started living in like Cerritos for a little bit, but then I came back for high school and I mainly feel like in high school that kind of shaped me into who I am today with my like passions and aspirations. Um, I was a part of like the PACE program at Long Beach Poly, which a lot of people know that high school. Um, A lot of famous people came out of there. Um, And that college prep program really kind of, set the tone of like you know academics are like key I still was able to like do sports there because sports are really big um and yeah it just kind of shaped me to really work hard got me into UCSD was really blessed for that and then now you know um in a grad program like that has really like shaped me to be like organized and um just following through taking it day by day with my academics Yeah, we're definitely going to get into some of those academics later in the episode. Uh, You mentioned sports. What sports did you play in high school? Um, So I started with track and field. I ran four and 800, um, put me in the four by four whenever they needed. Um, And then I also did dance team there for a couple of years. Um, It was part of like the last period of class. So I was able to do dance and then track after school. So I was like tag team in two different sports. Um. And yeah, that's really it. Yeah, those two were mainly. Running track. I used to always love supporting my friends who were on the track team when I went to high school. And even at UCSD, the folks that was on the track team. Uh, if we were to put you onto the track right now and ask you to run the four by four, what's what's the times looking like? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> it's giving like 115. Like it's really, really bad. <laughs> but we were under we were under a minute, I think. So <laughs> Way back, hey. I had stamina. <laughs> hey, one for team better than I would do on the track right now. I'm better than most people listening to this podcast. So um, I think that's still good. You're still young. We 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 going to pray for the good body health for the near future. So we can run the four by four. By the time you finish grad school, I want you still in tip top shape to be able to participate in any track and field event. We're going to try. I'm going to start getting in the gym then. <laughs> Stay training. Fit. Uh, but you mentioned you attended UC San Diego. What made you want to go to UCSD? Like what led you to UCSD? So I really think the biggest thing was location wise. Um, I was far enough from family, but like close where I could come back. I, I, I think I went back once a month, like realistically, unless there was like dance or some other event that I had to like be there for. Um, but I feel like the biggest thing was the location. I think I love California. Like, I definitely wanted to stay in Cali. Um, and then the UC system as a whole, like, prestigious. You know, I just knew, like, a UC campus was, like, something really good, especially for, you know, my future aspirations. Um, and then I saw the school, and I was like, wow, like, it's modern, like, you know, by the beach. Like, there was just a lot of, like, pluses to it. Um, but, of course, like, people that look like me, you know, black, being black was not, you know, in that priority um, with like what, less than 3%. Um, yeah, it was just hard to find people that look like me um, unless I went to events like like that just to, you know, see people. But that's just like a stretch for me going out of my way to do that instead of mm-hmm. just naturally 
seeing people walk by. So that was definitely a change from high school because I had a really diverse high school. There was literally every ethnicity, race, et cetera. Um, and then coming here, it was like predominantly, you know, Asian or white, they would say PWI. Um, but yeah, I think regardless, I was able to kind of make it out of there and like make the most of it. So it's good. And what did you end up choosing as your major for UCSD? Um, after like first quarter, I ended up choosing human developmental sciences. Um, we have a bachelor's of art in science. So I ended up choosing, <laughs> choosing the sciences because I was going to be pre-health. Um, and I feel like that was really the best major for me. Um, cause I consider bio, but it was super impacted. Um, and I'm like, I'm not going to get in. So I got to figure out like what else to do. Cause I was undeclared physical sciences. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, human development, like they have really good, um, like advisors in the, um, program that just make sure that you're on track each year um and the classes are actually really interesting like I didn't feel like a drag to go to like those HDS uh, courses um and I learned a lot I feel like it's um applying to what I'm like doing today as well you're the second human developmental sciences person on this podcast really? uh, I actually interviewed my friend Irene she was a human development major uh, HCP was one of those first classes I took at UCSD and I was just really invested in the field too. So I think it's always just cool hearing from people who have similar love for it or similar passion, similar experience from it. Um, obviously at UCSD, you weren't just in the classroom though. You were pretty involved on campus, I would say. Um, let's start with your UCSD involvement. What types of things did you get involved with as a student outside of the classroom? Oh my gosh. I I don't know. I never just like to sit down. There was always something I like to do. Like I have so many identities that I wanted to clear. So I think so many identities I wanted to clear. So um the first one I actually ended up joining was um the martial orientation team. And that was right as we moved off campus in 29, oh sorry, 2020, the pandemic. Um I wanted to be an RA. That I didn't get that position. I was kind of bummed out, but then the orientation team reached out to me and I was super grateful for them to um, accept me to the program. And even though it was like a Zoom related like orientation for the upcoming freshman class, um, it still was like really impactful. Um, just kind of making those connections via Zoom was like really hard, but I had a lot of like orientees turn their cameras on and like feel comfortable, even though we were in those spaces. Um, so I feel like, that really shaped like my personality even though like I'm already like outgoing and stuff it really just kind of um in integrated into um the your TMC family and the orientation team as a whole um and then of course like last year I ended up being senior orientation leader which was just all the back end stuff making sure each you know lecture hall has all this type of stuff for all the orientees making sure they go around the certain spots on campus for the tours, like a lot of back end stuff people don't know about. Um, I did it with most of my senior team, so that was cool. Um, and then also started on the dance team um, before coming in, I uh, auditioned that May of 2019, got it and um, have been on the team those past whole four years of being at UCSD. Um, and then VSU, of course, um, that was in 2020, also pandemic. Um, I saw that there was like positions open. So I decided to just like full send it and see whatever um, position that best suited me. So I chose our story in at first um, and then moved up with like chair, both junior and senior year. So um, that definitely touched into like my identity as being an African-American woman um, and just kind of supporting my community on campus. Those are like my big three, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's when you first started uh, getting involved with BSU. I think that's when I first remember us virtually crossing paths because you were one of the leaders that was involved in like the Hanson and the Black Student Experience Symposium. And I would just see you in a variety of Zoom meetings, just advocating for Black students on campus. And I think in the back of my head, I was like, how do we got this like little... <laughs> second year first year third year whatever it was at the time but like 
just a student who is already such a big leader on campus and like going they're like who is kennedy that they go into these decisions for like who is this kennedy person i just knew that you were somebody who had a lot of leadership skills and leadership potential just by how much i saw you just hyper physical and i think that goes to show just how much power that we had as students on campus and just how much we're able to utilize our voices and make our voices known um so that was my recollection of first interacting with you virtually but do you have a memory of when we first crossed paths at UCSD? It's so funny, like when people like always say, oh, like, you know, what's your first impression of me or like, remember? And I just never remember when it initially happened. It's just like the click was so like natural that, you know, like every interaction we've had, it's like, oh, like, you know, like, I don't even remember how it started, but here we are. But I want to say it had to be something in like the BRC where like I actually met you in person via instead of via Zoom. Um, and then you just making your little Laker jokes, knowing that I'm a Clippers fan. I'm like, okay, here he goes again. Like, I'll never be like left alone. But um, yeah, I feel like mainly like my senior year, like later in junior year, that's when we got like really close and I ended up having, you know, one-on-ones and just talking with you, like, you know, how do I approach this like leadership wise and even just outside of leadership, just like, life, self-care, all that stuff, making sure I'm good. So um, no, super grateful to have you as a friend. And I wish I knew how it started, but I, it's gone. Like, hey, I don't know. It don't there even was a lot that was happening. Yeah, it doesn't even matter because there was a lot that was happening at the time. And that's pretty much my memory too. Like it was just working at the center. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to pass my office every time you enter the BRC and you were there a lot of days throughout the week. Um, I wasn't going to mention that she was a Clippers fan on the podcast just yet, but you brought it up. So I think that we have to at least leave a little bit of space for it. Uh, we have so much in common. Like you're from the greater Los Angeles area. We both went to UCSD, both love black people, but then for your sports fandom, you, what, what happened? what 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 happened let's that's the, I don't I don't even know if that's the question like how does one become a Clippers fan growing up in Long Beach California I mean a lot of my sports like teams are mainly from my dad I would say but you know him taking me to all, all these games and stuff it kind of like made me be like all right I love sports like I like this and I don't know like we just happened to like the Clippers and this is way back when I was in like middle school you know Blake Griffin Chris Paul like Jamal Crawford way way back and I, ever since then like I've hey don't been... don't way way back that it's 2000 I, don't 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 do that you got me over here feeling like I'm just ancient talking about no. way way back when you was in middle school like that's that's that was, that was a long time ago like I would always like wear my Clippers stuff to like school, like sixth grade, I would stroll up in and like, oh my gosh, like this girl is like obsessed with the Clippers. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like it's it's come from like my family and just my whole like mom's side also likes Clippers. I just feel like we, I just have to, it's my calling to be Clippers fan. With oh, the jersey God. too. I'm yes, so happy. Did. See, the, the video's already censoring no. it for us because they're like, we cannot have <laughs> this Clippers propaganda on my Banquet Hall podcast. Trust. They're going to do big things. Does... Yeah, okay. Uh... <laughs> How does it feel to be the first Clippers fan to ever be asked to be on a podcast? You know, I'm glad to be the first. <laughs> they're going to look back right now, Clippers fans behind me, okay? And they're going to be like, who's the first one? me so it feels good to be the first <laughs> uh I just you are probably literally the first diehard Clippers fan that I've ever met in my life and I think from people who don't grow up in the city of LA that could sound a little weird because it's like oh they're like everybody in LA roots for both teams and that's just not the case like oh. not I the Clippers definitely have their fan base in LA now but mm -hmm. LA is still like 90% Lakers fans and that's being gracious. <laughs> no, it is true. Like, you know, when I go to games, like <laughs> our tickets cheaper, maybe, <laughs> but like, I, you know, I'm still rooting for my team. Like at the end of the day, and like they end up going to the playoffs. Like it's just, yeah, they'd be choking sometimes, but like, and I can say that cause it's my Oof. team, 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, it is true. Like a lot of LA is, you know, Laker fans. Um, and they love their city. So I gotta respect it. But you know, when it comes time when we're in the crypto, it's my time. And we get our own stadium soon. Say less. <laughs> the intuit dome yeah y'all gotta y'all gotta get out of crypto slash staples y'all y'all need your own place out of respect y'all need your own place y'all need your own fans because honestly like i've been to clippers lakers home where's clippers home games mm-hmm. and when they put their little safe selfies in front of our banners and whatnot i'm like oh this is real this is real cute in here like y'all trying to make it nice and clippers like but we got the statues outside. We got the banners outside. Y'all just need your own place. It's just what it is. So I'm looking forward to the Clippers having their own place, seeing what that home court advantage is like. But most importantly, I'm very curious what the Clippers-Lakers games look like there. That that should be true. Watch, there's going to be more Lakers fans at that than Clippers fans, even though it's our <laughs> our dome. Like, Purely yeah. out of petty. We're already in L.A., so... They're, both fan bases are there, so. Yeah, both yeah. fan bases are there. But despite your Clipper fandom, I think that that was definitely a pillar of our friendship because I feel like when both of our teams would be playing each other or if there was a national TV game and the Clippers blow it or the Lakers blow it and one of us come to the center, you know one of us got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but good times, good times. That is how we cross paths. And then some listeners might recognize you because you also gave a speech at our most recent Black graduation ceremony. Um, I forget, you. I gave the speech first and then you went up, right? Did you go second? Yeah, but we're, when we were writing it and planning it, we are hoping that it was going to be reverse. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what was that like to just have that moment in front of like your family, your friends at the Black graduation ceremony after having gone through years at UC San Diego, most of which you were on Zoom, like dealing with pandemic stuff. Like, what was that like to give that speech at Black Rad? Um, so like my first like big thing where I've talked at was at the Black Student Experience Symposium. And that was still on Zoom. So that was like a big thing for me at the time because I'm like, oh my gosh, there was a lot of attendees, a lot of faculty, staff. Um, and I was already nervous, like behind the screen, even though I could just, you know, post up with my little notes behind, like it's not that big of a deal. So then when um, you know, John asked me, like, okay, are you willing to be the speaker for um Black Grad? And I was like, at first, no, like that's a lot of people, like, you know, in person. And, you know, I've talked at church and other places, but I don't know, something about this had me, like, nervous. And um, even just speaking in crowds, like, I don't have a problem, but I just think the fact that it was such a big event, you know, like, we're graduating, it means a lot. That's what had me a little nervous. Um, But then I found out that, you know, Kyler, he was like, you know, if I'm doing the grad speech, you got to be undergrad speaker. I said, okay, I can't leave him hanging, so I got to, you know, do my little speech. So, you know, it got close to the day and then, you know, started writing it out. Um, And I feel like it really just came together, actually, you know, when you're speaking, because you can never prepare for everything. You know, things will naturally come out Um, when you talk. You will go off script. You know, you just got to feel what the crowd is feeling. Um, So I feel like it was a really good experience to have. Um, And I would probably do it again, like if I was able to speak at um, any other event for black students, uh, 10 out of 10, I would do. Um, but I feel like it was a really good experience for, you know, to see my family on my right side, um, and like the left of the audience was like inspiring people from out of state were able to see me. They still talk about it to this day. <laughs> oh, we have it recorded. It's on Facebook. Like, yeah, it does mean a lot. Um, and of course my friends were there too. And of course the black students, um, mm. I got all of like compliments after, um, the speech they thought I was like so famous I'm like guys relax I'm just like y'all like don't worry um but yeah I just feel like you know to be a speaker like that's already like wow like she is like driven a leader um and yeah it felt really good to get that leadership award from the BRC um mm-hmm. because it really was like oh like I didn't think I was that much of a leader because it's just kind of like my natural like instinct and calling um but the fact that others can see it was like really big for me so I do have that it's at home it's in Long Beach but you know just remembering getting that was um 
super big part of my graduation week, day, and just overall UCSD experience. Yeah, I mean, we definitely could all see the leadership in you. Like, I think it's all over just how you operate, how you carry yourself. And I think, honestly, some of the best leaders come from people who are just being themselves and doing things naturally, like your natural love for people, uh, your natural willingness to put yourself out there to try new things, to like be an advocate for someone, those things just come naturally for you. But for some people, those things are dormant or non-existent. So even just being willing to be a person on a Zoom call who's going to speak on behalf of Black students or is going to ask administration about things on behalf of Black students to be able to be in those positions, like you were definitely a leader. So I'm happy that you had that moment and got to have that affirm because yeah, when you didn't want to do it, I was like, nah, like you, you need, people need to hear your story. Like people need to hear more about who you are, because I think sometimes it's really easy, especially in a higher education environment for people to get lost in titles. And like, yeah. you're not just the chair of BSU. You're not just a black student at UCSC, but you're Kennedy, like you have Kennedy's story. So I'm happy that you had that moment. Um, I'm happy that we're able to workshop those speeches together. I'll never forget telling you when I read your speech for the first time, I was like, oh, you're going to start crying right there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was true. <laughs> Nearly tearing up. Yeah, it was a good time, though. We got to be on stage. Uh, we got to get there extra early for no reason and watch everything get set up. <laughs> and, you know, we're repping our teams, too, that, that day, too, like right before we changed. Well, that is true we did have on lakers and clippers gear did you have on a Clippers shirt or was it a jersey i don't remember it was just a shirt like uh one of the shirts that they put on like for the playoff chairs when they were gotcha like, <laughs> yeah gotcha and so our one-to-ones weren't always just about bsu or just about um the lakers being the superior team in los angeles as we all have agreed upon thus far um but we also <laughs> <laughs> we also were talking about your pursuit of graduate school um, when you first started talking to me about the application process and writing to go to optometry school. Um, I always, or not always, but I would joke with you afterwards that after we had that initial conversation about optometry school, I would get so many Reddit like notifications on my phone because I was looking up like personal statement prompts and things to help you. And then all for the next few weeks is like, oh, interested in opto school, top opto school, Berkeley opto school interviews. I'm like, dog, I'm not, I'm not going to optometry school. <laughs> um, but before we get into what made you want to go to opto school. Why don't you talk a little bit, just because I'm a big proponent of uh, being inclusive when we talk about some of these academia-related things. So what is the study of optometry first, just for our listeners to help frame the conversation? Yeah, so like in the most simplistic way, we are helping people see, um, you know, like there's different refractions of light that your eyes are able to, um, you know, perceive. And it goes way back into like what neuroanatomy and, and honestly, your eyes are connected to all parts of your body. So just the first step of us getting you to see can help many other things um, like medically. Um, so yeah, I would just say it's just the eye doctor, all things eyes. Um, we do not do eye surgery. I want to like preface that because a lot of people think um, we're eye surgeons, but um, that's like ophthalmology. Um, but yeah, we're just mainly um, looking at ocular health and um, any diseases that can arise through um, your eyes that we can help, um, you know, mitigate. And so what made you want to pursue this as a profession and as a career, as a passion? Um, so I got glasses way back in first grade. Um, I was like unable to see the board. I would like sit like this close to the TV when I would get home, eat my dinner. Um, so they took me to the, you know, optometrist and every year you go for your like checkup and I was like, oh, this is really cool what they're doing. They're super like communicative people. Like, um, they have like great, great personalities and like, it doesn't feel like you're at the doctor, like necessarily. Um, so middle school, like there was like a African-American like wax museum for black history month. And I ended up like looking up some, you know, optometrists or like famous, um, African-Americans in the field. And after doing my research on that, I was like, this is really what I want to do, um, either optometry or ophthalmology. So I knew med school was kind of in the picture, but I wasn't really 
confident in that until, you know, I got past high school and into college, getting closer to like, you know, grad school programs. Um, did shadowing with my optometrist and other private practices. So a lot of these things kind of helped me realize that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and some of those people even got me into like integrated into the appointments, like helping, you know, with case history or, um, you know, prepping the materials before the patient comes in. So like, it kind of made me feel like I was already like hands-on in the work. So I felt like it was really the calling to do so and um, actually go to optometry school um, and become an optometrist. And so if we rewind probably almost exactly a year around this time, probably, but uh, you were starting like your application process, you're starting to figure out your personal statements and your writing prompts to optometry school. And I think that was just a general stressful time, like entering senior year, being chair for the second time of BSU. What was that process like? And then what was that emotional state like when you got accepted to your dream school, UC Berkeley, Cal Berkeley, one of the top schools in the nation, and you get to start your dream of going to optometry school? Walk us through the process. <laughs> so way back in, ooh, I think right after junior year, like I finished, I was like, okay, I knew there were some schools that um, did not take um, the OAT exam, which is just like the MCAT or anything like that, um, because they look at the applicant holistically. So I knew that one of the schools was Berkeley, which was my top school. Um, so I was like, ooh, like I asked my parents, like, you think it's a good idea to just kind of go straight in um, applying um, and then after my senior year, have that summer and then go into optical school. And they're like, yeah, no, I think it's doable. Like, you know, let's just, you know, get all your materials set and then, you know, see how the application process looks. So the application opens like June 30th, um, the year before you want to come into the school. So it was June 30th, like 2022. And I finally like made my portal for the application. Um, and you need like four letters of rec. And then they, each school has their own um, set of questions to ask. And then of course they give you like space for like work experience and et cetera, just like any other application for undergrad, other grad programs. Um, so, you know, I first had to see, okay, who are my letters of rec? Um, who can like really write the best um, like aspect of me because mm -hmm. they whatever side of me. Um, so I got like good letters of rec there, including like, I would say my biggest letter of rec was Leslie Carver, which was provost of Marshall College, which is, where I did most of my work also. So super grateful for her. And I also like still connect with her to this day. Um, and then I submitted it September 30th. There's three application cycles. Um, and I just remember like most of my summer was like no summer. Like I was traveling, going to opto camps, doing all this stuff, you know, prepping for BSU work, prepping for a dance team. I was also president for dance team. And then even trying to go to the coffee shops to write my application. Um, so I was, I felt like my emotional state there was like stressed out because I'm like, I don't know, am I like, you know, BSing it? I want it to be like the best side, like, like applicant, mm -hmm. like for this cycle. So I finally turned it in like September 29th to be anticipated for that second cycle. But my credentials did like not get verified on both sides with the school and the system. So I ended up getting pushed to the third cycle. Mm -hmm. So that got me stressed out again because I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, there's less spots for me to, you know, get into the program. So the only thing I could do was just wait because, you know, time is just, you know, a whole different story because, you know, time just starts to go slow and you really need to go fast. And then when it goes fast, it's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, so it was finally like December and they said that that's when the time would be around um, the third cycle to see if you have an interview. So then it was right after we got off of school for winter or sorry, fall quarter. And they emailed me back saying, you got an interview. Here's time to sign up. And I was super excited. That was already one step further. Um, then I scheduled my interview like for the first day of winter quarter of UCSD just so I didn't have any like classwork to do I just mm -hmm. wanted to focus on the interview so um it was like January 9th I remember the exact day and it was like an evening interview because they just have interviews uh for all time zones so I just ended up choosing like a 7 p.m or something crazy like that um and 20 minutes before a lot of people don't know this I was like bawling my eyes out I was just so nervous uh... 
I just knew this was what I wanted to do. I didn't want to mess it up. But I already got this far to have an interview. Like, they already see something in me. They just want to make sure that, like, you know, two and two fits together. So I just made sure to show my best self in the process. Um, so, yeah, 30 minutes went by so fast. Yeah. And I, up, I was smiling right after. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> why am I stressing? Like, I met, like, a really good faculty member, and it was a student. Um, and, of course, I want to always end an interview with questions. So I had, like, some questions for them. Um, followed up with the email and then you know once again another waiting game three weeks four weeks whatever um, and then I was at my elementary school on a Tuesday it was February 7th and I was driving back on the 805 and I got a call it was like 5 10 and I'm like that's Berkeley's <laughs> that's their area code and it said Berkeley California so I um, answered the phone call and then she asked me if it was Kennedy I said yes and then um, she just said, congratulations. I just wanted to tell you like before you get the actual um, letter online that you got into the school, um, you know, good job for your accomplishments, et cetera, et cetera. And then hung up and instantly called the parents, you know, just letting them know. And then one of my best friends as well. And then I ended up having my one-on-one -on -one with Kyler that day, I think, or I ended up yeah. stopping back to you. Um, and then I told him there too. So he was like one of the first people to know about Berkeley and the whole process. And of course he was there from the jump, just every time I came to tell you, all right, like got this done. So like here we're on the next step. Um, so yeah, I felt like that whole like process was like, it felt so long ago, but it was really just less than a year. And mm -hmm. I'm super proud of myself. Um, a lot of people around me knew already that like, you're going to get in, you're going to get in. But like, it was like my dream school. So of course, you know, naturally nervous, um, seeing if I would even fit in there. Um, but yeah, I obviously we're here now and I'm super excited to be in the Bay. I've always loved the Bay when I would visit. So mm. now just being here, I'm like, wow, like this is a lifestyle, super chill here. People are like able to be themselves and like wear whatever they want to wear and like not feel judged. Um, so I feel like it's really cool. Um, part of California to be in even though I'm from SoCal mm -hmm. still got love for SoCal but I think I'm turning into NorCal so yeah <laughs> hey don't betray the Southern California region too much <laughs> <laughs> um but so having retold all of that thinking back to those stressful times as well as when you got that phone call to being able to talk about it to announcing at black grad uh, that you're going to Berkeley and just hearing people cheer for you, uh, joking that you're uh, calling you Dr. Cofield already. Um, <laughs> looking back at that now and then where you're at today, how's how's it going so far? Like, how's opto school? It's going really well. I moved in like six days before we had like our orientation stuff. So just kind of getting acclimated to the, the city because they always say it's a little, you know, different year. Um, so I just... Went around, like went places with my family, um, and then ended up kind of, you know, doing my room how I wanted because I knew I was gonna spend a lot of time here and the school. So I had to make sure that my atmosphere was, you know, all set. Um, orientation went really well. I met some people from the admin day I went to back in March again. So it's good to see people that actually accepted to come here um and already seen familiar faces. Um, and also like the class, like atmosphere as a whole, um, super close knit with like 65 in my class. So I basically know everybody and there's always somebody I can lean to, to like ask for help or, um, you know, study with study groups. Um, but yeah, most of my time is spent at that school and it's not like depressing or anything. It's just like, there's a library there that you could study at. Um, classes are mainly Tuesday, Thursdays with lectures, and then Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are labs. So it's whatever your lab time is, is. But then if you have a break in between, like you could study there. So I end up still staying there, like just to study. Um, so I try to find other places to study other than the school because I don't want to always be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so kind of getting used to everything. Um, it's been a little over a month. Um, but yeah, I think I do like it. I like the people there, um, the faculty, like, gosh, like there's always a faculty member that's done something like good for like optometry or research. So it feels good to go to like a campus that 
uh, has a lot of people who are already um, doing well in the profession and knowing that that could be me and making that difference um, is what I'm really excited for. And so looking forward, you've finished opto school, you're in your profession, you're in your career. What do you hope that the people that you're servicing and serving throughout your career, what do you hope that they see in Dr. Cofield, this Dr. Cofield, not your, not your parent? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like because in opto school, everyone thinks, oh, study, study, study. And like, you know, I feel a lot of my classmates and optometrists in general, like, you know, have this good personality, warm, bubbly. Um, and like I said, with communication, like is really key in that profession. Um, so we're all kind of like that. But I just want people to know, like, I don't want people to think I'm like, you know, so smart, always trying to do what I need to do, like being that leader. I want them to see like, oh, it's really fun to do this. And um, there's so many like modes of practice that you could um, achieve in optometry. Um, just having them know that like I found my calling. Um, I want to do like sports vision therapy. So that ties my love of sports with like mm -hmm. my profession and even just my personality. Um, so I just want them to know like you can have fun. You could still, you know, be a whole doctor and not, you know, be intimidated by me because I that's like, the last thing I want. Um because I've had my fair share of people tell me, I'm intimidated by you, Kennedy. Oh my God, I'm like, I'm the most like down to earth. Like, why would you, why are you intimidated by me? Like, I'm always willing to help others and making sure that you can get like me if you're like inspired by me, right? So I just want to share my knowledge of how I get organized, how I do this, um, just so I can share it. I'm not gonna gatekeep anything. Just, um, I want everyone to succeed. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's why you're the perfect person to have on a podcast like this, just because I think it's important for people to be able to see that side of you and be able to hear your, obviously, we're not going to talk about every single day in your story, but we've gotten bits and pieces of your story. And as people listen to this episode and think through like the positions you've held, the things you're passionate about outside of the Clippers, and how that might uh, factor into who you are as an optometrist, who you are as somebody in the field. I think that's all important to your story. And I think that people are going to be looking forward to seeing Dr. Cofield blossom into the field. Uh, so would you be working for the Clippers as a team doctor specializing in vision? Is that the, is that the end goal? Hey, hey that's, that's the tip top goal. But honestly, any sports team, I'm down to, I'm down to support. I'll probably convert to being their fan <laughs> if I end up. <laughs> See, now we have this on wax on a podcast that I'm speaking into existence as a manifestation. You're going to end up working for the Los Angeles Lakers. You're going to become a Lakers fan. Oh, it's going to come full Clippers. circle. <laughs> I think I'll work for any of the teams except the Lakers. I'm going to turn that offer. <laughs> so the Lakers offered you a six figure contract, uh, eight figure contract. Oh, wow. And was like, we want Dr. Cofield for the next 20 years of this franchise. You can opt out whenever you want, but we want you because you're the best in the field. We want you to be the Lakers team doctor. You're going to say no. That's hard, though. Like, come on. I got to go, I gotta go where the money is, you know? Like, But <laughs> for the fan, because they're going to give me what all this stuff. And it's going to be Lakers stuff. No, 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 no. I can't wear any of that. Got to stay loyal to my team selfish you just said uh, i'll still give them the best <laughs> care for sure i'm not gonna like you know i'm not gonna All right, go up. well can you at least tell them my size and just give me the lakers merch and invite me to the games can that be a deal you know i got you with that Free okay games. i i accept that yeah you you become a fan though if you because you're building relationships the players you don't have to be a diehard fan but you would still oh, root yeah. for you would root for the lakers a lot more than you currently do probably yeah <laughs> Uh, just imagine it's going to be 20 years from now LeBron James Jr. is on the Lakers being tended to by Dr. Cofield it's going to be great I'm speaking into existence I love it that's why it's we podcast happen. I already know now that you said it, it's going to happen You're like oh great now I'm going to make this decision <laughs> to go to the Lakers <laughs> we'll see we'll see but then we're going to be turning up in LA like I'll be at the games I'll be I'll have a Dr. Cofield if you were for the Lakers I'll get a Dr. Cofield jersey I'm willing to say that on the podcast it will say Dr. Cofield purple and gold and you're going to love and hate it at the same time <laughs> no I think I'm trying to love it <laughs> there will be no hate at that moment he's rubbing my name you know you're rubbing absolutely 
Um, before we go to the tail end of the podcast, I wanted to make sure we left space to talk about your interests outside of school, because obviously you're in graduate school right now, but similar to undergrad, you're not just here to study optometry. Uh, you have interests that lie outside of school. Uh, what are some of the things that you're passionate about, interested in, hobbies, just anything else on the podcast for us to get a little bit more of an insight as to who Kennedy is? Yeah, so usually after a long day of studying, like, at campus, I usually come back here, you know, wind down. Um, I've been really into making, like, new Spotify playlists, like, just kind of moving songs around, like, with different vibes. Um, like, turn on music and, like, do that on the side is cool. Um, you know, watching Netflix, I've been getting into um, All American Homecoming. I know that was, like, a while back that that came out, but um, I'm starting to, like, watching that. Um Usually on the weekends, I like to go out, see Oakland and SF, um, and also, like, try new food places. Um, just wanted to plug my Ken Foodie Dump account. Um, may also be tagged on the podcast. Um, so I just like taking pictures of food. Just, you know, that's where all my money goes, I feel. Like, it's, it's <laughs> unfortunate, but, I mean, you got to eat, right? So you got to eat good. Um, and then, of course, just kind of showing the aspect of optometry school on my opto account. That's just kind of fun. Um, anything with social media, I just like to do editing and, you know, making flyers and stuff. Um, it's just not more of like work. It's just kind of like a natural like creativity side of me. Um, and of course, I haven't really been doing as much dancing now that, um, you know, I'm not on the team. So I'm just trying to look for some studios just to kind of pop in and like take a class to keep it up, like um, my stamina and like, you know, learning uh, material like quickly. Uh, and then I have been going to the gym a couple of times as well. Um, that was really a big thing in the summer when I was doing nothing, surprisingly, because that's like one of the first summers I've had nothing to do. Uh, but now that there's like school, it's like probably two times a week instead of like six days. So at least I'm getting like something in, but um, it does distract from like all the schoolwork. Um, so that's what I would say goes on outside of school really. And so you started with this making Spotify playlist. So I need to put you on a spot with a question. So uh -uh. you're making the perfect Kennedy playlist. Like it has to just be your specific vibe. What uh -huh. are three what are three artists that have to be on that playlist no matter what? Like oh yeah. Three three artists who have to be I on the playlist. Right now. So these are my big three artists at the moment. Um, but I'm gonna do two different vibes. I'm gonna do like hip hop rap, if that was like a playlist, and then R and B because I don't like to mix both of them in a playlist because I feel like it's two different vibes. So straight hip hop rap, we got Mike Sherm. We got Pop Smoke and we got, um, who don't want to say, like E-40. So like, honestly, some Bay Area type stuff, like add people that are kind of like their vibe as well into that playlist. And then with r and I got like Brent Fires, like Kehlani, Drake. That's three. Ah, uh, no, but like I need, I need more, I need more. Uh, I think that's everybody. But then, like, you know, where's Beyonce going to go? Like, you know, like, there's just so Hey, I, I told you to pick the three. You don't want to left Beyonce out. <laughs> but I just have so many, like, artists that, like, I kind of resonate with. It just depends on the vibe for me to be like, okay. Like, if I'm, like, in the baddie, okay, like, I'm about to get ready, turn up. Like, that's going to be Pop Smoke. That's going to be Mike Sherm, you know? And then if I'm just, like, you know, chilling, doing homework, have that on the, on the back end of listening to music, that's when R&B and, like, slower music or like lo-fi beats um that's when that comes into play so that's that's Kennedy's music taste for you all right <laughs> how about I give you a specific vibe and then you have to create a playlist with only three artists represent on a playlist okay it's it's a Friday night you ain't got no plans the Clippers about to come on and you just getting into game mode three artists to get you into game mode for the Clippers Okay. So definitely Pop Smoke because I feel I there's there's several songs like my hype song by him. Um Dior, like that's like so basic, but also Meet the Woo is my favorite song. And then 44 Bulldog, which is like a lower, lower key one. Yeah, because I'm a real fan. 
That's okay. Uh, okay, okay. the and fandom then... real quick. That's three. <laughs> Wait. What do you mean? I said three artists on the playlist. I only said Pop Smoke. Oh, I'm Those... tripping. I thought you... Oh, this, this Got you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Got you. Pop Smoke, right? And then I would say... I forgot to mention The weekend. How could I forget him? I'm obsessed with him. Um, He would have been added to the R&B playlist. But... There, like he has, you know, a big song, so I would definitely put like Heartless or um, like Reminder or oh my God, I'm blanking right now, but he got another upbeat song. I don't know, but yeah, so Weekend would go on there, but like not like the sad like type stuff. Yeah, like upbeat. Um, and then probably Drake. Drake could probably get me in a hype mood to like, you know, watch some mm. basketball. Like they always like to use his music for like promo type stuff. So I feel like Drake would really be on there. So that'd be my big three in like that type of vibe, Friday night um, turn up before a game the Clippers are about to win. Yeah. I just say all that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and get to some of the quick hitter questions of the podcast. Uh, just whatever comes to mind first. Uh, first piece or first question would be words of advice for someone who is looking to be a leader because I'm thinking of you as chair of BSU like being a leader in a group of their peers even like I think that's a very specific niche to be a leader in so if I'm a person listening to this podcast maybe I'm in college uh, thinking about becoming chair of BSU what is your advice for like stepping into a leadership role um, I feel like in those like community spaces, just first kind of getting acclimated to like that campus or wherever you're, you know, trying to be a leader and getting to know that community. So just going to those events, just seeing like who could you be leading, right? Because you want it, you want this leadership position, just seeing like all the different students and, you know, personalities and ways that, you know, people express themselves. I feel like that was a big thing for me. Um, so I started going to more of those events that got me like, okay, like I want to contribute to creating an event or even, you know, leading this pack per se. Um, so I just would say, you know, getting to know people, like that's just a really generic thing just when you're talking to somebody new, but just trying to see like, how could you best fit in like this community, even though yes, you're already a black student or whatever. Um, community you're leading but I feel like that's a really big thing and also just if it's something new that you're doing just try something new like step out of your comfort zone because I know it can be hard to lead a group of people because it'll be your word like being spread to other organizations and places on campus so just making sure you have a team behind you that is you know supporting you um you'll definitely be able to like step out of your comfort zone and um, be able to, you know, make your own decisions, leaning on your board for positions and what looks best in your image and, um, you know, not like bringing you back on like a downfall um, for the yeah. organization. Uh, so yeah, I feel like those two things are really what's big in being a leader. Um, and you have to have that confidence. I feel like, yeah, you have to worry about what people are, you can't worry about what people are saying about you. Like, it's just, you know, you have these decisions to make, so you just got to step up and do them. So, yeah. Great advice. Uh, what about some people who inspire you or influence you? Where do you find inspiration? Mm, okay. Um, in school at UCSD, I feel like Jada really inspired me. I know she's been on this podcast before um just she was super hard working you know having her own like business still doing school and I just saw like a lot more than what can meet the eye like if you just meet her um mm -hmm. working with her as a co-chair um and then you know when she left I kind of brought that upon myself to you know kind of not like be her but you know the per the qualities and traits that she has to you know be driven um that really helped me like kind of lead throughout my senior year and being like the only chair instead of kind of having like you know the duo um yeah she definitely inspired me because like in college like you know like you don't be having all this time to be doing all that stuff but yet yeah. you know she decided to do all this stuff and it has done extremely well and you know for me right doing all these extracurriculars and stuff like I still happen to make it work 
Um, so yeah, I think we have a lot of like similarities there, but she has inspired me um, with like family and like growing up, definitely my dad, I would say. Um, he's also super hardworking. Um, and he got me interested in like being in like the medical field in general. I remember like in kindergarten, like it was like, you know, bring your parent to school or whatever. And it was his day to come. And then he like, you know, showed everybody what um, he does in typical work day. I like made like a little like flyer with him on it and like <laughs> his like stethoscope or whatever. Um, so I, it was just like, I've always been inspired. And like that was in kindergarten. So like just now, like when he says he's proud of me, it's just like, mm. it's home because I'm like, now nah, like you really are the one that like, made me want to like be so driven and like um hard working um so he's definitely like my twin my everything um and then maybe just in like the field of opto um honestly the black eye care perspective is a uh, a program that they have for black students who are you know seeking to be optometrists so every leader there um has inspired me to you know keep going each test just you know treat it like you know a test move on there's an exit like, there's always going to be stuff that's coming but making sure that you're putting your best work and foot forward to be the best black optometrist um in the next coming years and just seeing people like me like on the instagram and like in the field going to these conferences um it really means a lot so it like really also has me to be driven and hopefully taking on a leadership position in um, their perspective as well. Where can people find you and how can people support you? <laughs> like find me on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, if you want to give out your location for people to find you on a day-to-day -day basis, but where can people find you like on social media, websites? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, cause like, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's that opto school. Like, it is no in between. Like, yeah, I'm on campus, but I'm not nowhere else but that opto school. So that's where I'm usually at. Or I'm, like, down the streets of Telegraph getting some boba. Like, that's mm. that's where I'm at. But <laughs> on social media, first and last name, Kennedy Cofield. Um, and then if you want the different aspects, my food account is linked in my um, main account bio. So Ken Foodie Dump. And then Opto Bear Ken is my whole like professional Opto um, account, just um, my day to day life there and just things that I'm doing at the school. So, yeah, my little big three of my Instagram handles, mainly on a little Instagram as well. Um, I don't really have Twitter or any other social medias, but yeah. There's been a lot of threes in this podcast. We had the three artists, the big three IGs, uh, three people that inspire you and influence you. Uh, why don't we give them one more big three? What's the Zodiac big three? What's your sun, moon, rising? You know all oh, that for the pod. God. So I'm a Sagittarius sun, uh, Libra, no, Taurus moon, Pisces rising. And I'm going to triple check that right now. Because <laughs> like, I don't, I just mainly know this sad. Uh, yes okay yeah Taurus moon Pisces rising do I, I don't know think I've ever means? asked you that before yeah I don't know what that means when it comes to the moon and rising but I'm a Sagittarius and I'm an optimist that's what Nicki Minaj <laughs> once said so yeah Sagittarius. well the Taurus moon is why we're friends I think I think that might be oh, why Taurus. I am a Taurus sun you are a Taurus moon um I'm not qualified enough to tell you what that means. Like I have an I general idea that I can give you off record on a podcast, but I have too many friends interested in astrology who I listen to this and I say something and they're like, no, actually, and I'm I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the star people, I'm gonna let them handle, I'm gonna let them handle the the description because I'm not trying to get any flack in the comments. Um, not that they would give me any flack. But Ken Foodie Dub, you said Opto Bear Ken is the other one and then kennedy cofield on social media on ig at least uh you just got two extra followers on ken foodie dump i just followed as well as the banquet hall podcast just followed uh, so listeners make sure y'all tap in with kennedy over there um and then last but not least takeaways from this episode for you as well as takeaways from that you hope that our listeners take away from this podcast 
Yeah, so I didn't really touch much on it, but it was something that's been resonating with me, like, after about over a month in school, um, you know, with being with such a small group of people, like, 65 in my class, um, it's really hard to not compare yourself to others, and, you know, like, thinking that if I'm doing enough or if somebody else is doing more than me, et cetera, et cetera, and it kind of got to me within, like, the first actual in-person exam. I was just, like, really afraid, test anxiety, like, that I've never had before, um, because it was, like, the first major test of, like, graduate school, so I just want people to know that, like, you know, you're your own unique person person and you handle things differently than others so never compare yourself to others um and just tap in with the people that really do care about you and aren't you know what using you for clout or like so many other ways because people can just be using you to just study and then just kind of go about their day like people that want to actually hang out with you outside of school and um have their self-care moments with you um I feel like that's a really big takeaway um I wanted to like show I have something behind my for it. Sorry. Um, this helps me a lot. This is every letter that somebody's like written to me. Mm. Or, um, I don't know. Like, just like I, I don't know. Like we would have like end of the year stuff, and they would like give to me. So this is like every letter anyone has like decided to give to me. So I like open one, like look at one, and then just like realize my worth. Like okay, like people are inspired by me. Like. And, you know, I'm here for a reason. So this helps me just kind of stays behind my desk. Whenever I'm feeling like down, I just kind of pull one of them out and then read it and be like, oh, I miss them. Yeah, I'm missing a lot of people in like San Diego and like L.A., but um, I have a piece of them here. Kind of. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I have a box. It's like an affirmation box for me. I have a similar box that has like any letter notes like even if somebody just gave me like a post-it note like at my job like I have that post-it note in affirmation box I have affirmations from high school from UCSD so mm-hmm. I think that is a action item for our listeners write your friends more words of affirmation like give them affirmation letters send them a little note um, I'm gonna have to get your address off pod and I'm gonna write you a, a letter so I can get, make it to the jar yeah. um, but I think that is definitely good a good takeaway for our listeners in terms of just tapping in with the people that support that support them. Uh, but having gone through this podcast, your first ever time on a podcast, all that you've shared, what is something that you're taking home with you after like participating in this podcast? Um, honestly, just it was giving me a time to reflect on how like quick this has all been going. So just kind of like stepping back and realizing what I've been doing to get here. Um, that's what this podcast has taught me to just kind of like sit down and just reflect on like what I have done in my life that has gotten me to where I am today and not really worrying so much about the future because I mean it's going to play out itself and you can't really write all that out Um, the most you can do is take it day by day Um, so yeah just seeing other people even on this podcast like in everything that they're like passionate about um, I'm just glad to be one of those people like adding to the podcast thread um and just showing my aspect of life and how I'm living um and hopefully it just helps somebody else out so yeah I'm certain that it will absolutely certain uh one more thing that I've started doing with more recent episodes I want to start closing out episodes by asking for a recommendation for our listeners whether it's for a book a podcast a movie a song uh this could just be something that you just like and think more people need to engage with it could be something that would teach our listeners more about you. Uh, It could be something to teach them something, just whatever recommendation you have, book, podcast, movie, and or song. So two days ago, I'm a really big Disney fan, Pixar specifically. So I know that the movie Elemental came out like in June, but I was so busy with like graduation, travel. I never even got to um, watch the movie. So I always feel like Pixar movies like touch you on a different level. (laughs) So I ended up watching it like late night on like two yesterday on Tuesday. Um, and it just is about like, you know, like the different elements and like, you know, not mixing the elements, all this love, like whatever. But it's like shown in like a beautiful way. So I definitely feel like if y'all are like in Disney movies, just watching Elemental. Um, yeah, it's on Disney Plus. I think they already have it on there. They also mm-hmm. have like Hot Mansion and um 
Little Mermaid, like the one that just came out too. So if y'all don't want to watch those two, um, there's a really diverse cast in both of those. Um, yeah, so I guess those are my three movies, one to three movies real <laughs> quick um, that I like. Um, don't really read any books. Um, I don't really watch a lot of podcasts other than like yours as well. Um, and then songs are kind of just the same, same old songs. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate those recommendations. Uh, all good movies with good messages, good representation. Um, yeah, I always have thoughts on movies, but I'll say that for another podcast. <laughs> Uh, but Kennedy, you've been a blast to have on the podcast. I want to thank you for taking the time to be a guest on the Banquet Hall. Without further ado, just want to turn it over to you for any shameless plugs, any shout outs, anything you want to manifest before we close out the episode. Yeah, so shout out to obviously my family. Um, they have been like calling me every day, just making sure I'm good. You know, I have, haven't get, gotten to come back home as often as I usually do. So that was just kind of cool to just talk with them every day as like I finish every weekday after school um shout out to like my best friend Jess like still like calling her like to this day even though like we're still like further apart um and my roomies we ended up doing like this newsletter like thing that comes out every month where we write a couple questions just seeing how we're doing in each other's lives um and shout out to like my opto bestie um and like my mentor but like she kind of um talked with me before I got into the university um Lauren and Amelia they're like my two favorite people like the big three we got a little group chat called Blackbird Baddies because we're the baddies um <laughs> yeah like they've actually really helped um kind of make me feel like it was home um and yeah I think that's all like my little shout outs honestly so many others but um those people have like really been close to me um despite me being so far away yeah awesome what a great way to close out the episode with some gratitude for those that are there for us on the journey along the way uh listeners thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the banquet hall podcast uh kennedy gave you all five star content so make sure you leave a five star rating wherever you're listening leave that thumbs up hit that subscribe button all the things that you know that i'm asking you to do at the end of any bit of content uh this has been a blast i'm happy to just catch up with you and see you in general virtually uh, i feel like got to see you so much throughout that last year at ucsd so now being able to catch up via zoom and chat for an hour and a half it's been great and listeners there's more great content on the way so make sure y'all tuned in subscribed all that and we will catch y'all next time bye y'all